As far as my photography, I actually was hiking the West Coast Trail with a two megapixel Nikon digital like little point and shoot that was about 12 years ago or 11 years ago. And I got back, I downloaded the photos and I was like, oh wow, those are nice. I should buy a good camera, maybe they'll be nicer. And then I bought a nicer camera, I looked online, I watched some YouTube videos, I bought a nicer camera, I bought, a, eventually I have thousands of dollars worth of photography equipment, I go everywhere with it, I, um, and I've quite enjoyed uh, doing the photography. So just a little bit about what we'll be doing, and if you guys need a break, just say so. Again, small group here. So the first part is just talking about general photography terms. I'm not even gonna, like, it's not gonna be talking about equipment specific, um, obtaining a correct exposure, understanding some hardware variations, uh, some of the basic DSLR functions. And then we'll go on to do photo attributes um, about different software that is already programmed in your camera. Uh, we'll then do some post-processing in um, Lightroom and then some high dynamic range, just a brief picture of what that is, and then some basic guidelines on taking photos. All right, so I've included a couple photos that I've taken already, and I put some attributes down here. That, so this is Rodeo New Mexico at the Star Party, um, and this is one of the bungalows that you can stay in, um, the Milky Way over top. This is taken at, uh, with my Canon 5D Mark III. Um, it's a 24 millimeter lens and it's shot at f2.8. This is almost a two minute exposure. This is a little bit blurry because I was tracking with the sky tracker. Um, so I was actually tracking the stars. So instead of getting star trails up here, I got blurry down here. So that's blurry, that's all um, in focus. Um, this is Comet Panstars uh, back in March as well. So Comet over there. That's why it got the laser pointer. <laughs> um, and so this is actually taken with a bigger lens here, 70 to 200, and with a 1.4 extender. Sorry, this is kind of getting cut off here. So this is almost at 300 millimeters um, taken from a tripod. Pretty brief, uh, maybe sure. one second exposure. If it goes any longer, the moon will start moving yeah. too fast. Mm -hmm. Um, this is the northern lights taken from about 30 meters that way. Um, so this is actually taken here at All Star Telescope at the place. Um, this one was left for eight seconds on a tripod and opened up and got beautiful northern lights. Um, this is an owl I got recently. I got a nice big zoom lens and this is just taken about six miles that way, directly on the Westcott Road there. This is, <laughs> this is actually a view from Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro in Tanzania has three peaks on it. This is, I'm standing on the tallest peak looking over um, one of the other peaks. So just a little demonstration of some of the photography I've done. This is my niece. This is Antelope Canyon in Arizona. Um, just getting, this is a 0.4 seconds, so a little bit longer. It still was on the tripod to get that kind of flowing look there. It looks sand? like sand. Is it is sand. So, is no, sand? someone was throwing it up there and then it kind of dribbled down. Oh. All right, so basic exposure overexposed, underexposed, correctly exposed. Um, we've got the top one up there is overexposed. This one's too little exposed, this one's just right. So if I'm saying overexposed, underexposed, overexposed is too light, underexposed is too dark, all right? I'll be using those terms all the time. Currently, and I don't know if this is gonna change, there are three items that affect your exposure. The shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO. You play with all three of those to come up with the photo that you want. All right, so shutter speed, that's a cheetah. You wanna take it at a fast shutter speed. You don't want a, the cheetah to be blurred. Cameras take about one, one, one eight thousandth is the fastest any camera takes. Some of the cameras take one four thousandth of a second. So it's the length of time the shutter stays open. It's measured in fractions of a section, sec, second or in seconds itself. So if you're looking through your display, it will have a little, um, quotation mark right behind it, that means it's in seconds, or if it's um, one, one hundredth, it will have a fraction there. Um, obviously, you want to slow down if you want to be take, getting more light. 
Um, you can also do star trails, like it's down there. But if you're shooting something that's fast moving, you want a, a fast shutter speed. So again, this, we're going pretty basic here to start with. So intentional blurring of water. If you want a waterfall shot of blurring of water, anything blurring of the sand, you want your shutter speed open. You can't do that hand holding. Your, your camera is going to be bouncing around. You need a tripod for that. That is in called the Havasupai Indian Reservation. It's right adjacent to the Grand Canyon. In fact, this stream goes um, maybe another five miles and it's down into the bottom of the Grand Canyon. So, yeah, the Red Rocks, it's, it's, it's near it. Yeah, it's uh, about three hours away from there. And that was a 10 second explosion? That was a 10, correct. So if you ever want the nice flowing streams, flowing, um, all, there's a few other equipment that will we'll need for that. Uh, like, wouldn't, the, wouldn't that bring in like too much light, like 10 seconds? Yes, exactly. <laughs> we will get there. We will get there. That is, that is, that is exactly it. Unless you were shooting this at nighttime, you do need um, a filter on the front. Okay, and I'll, I'll get there. That's a great yeah, no, question. Good call. Yeah. All right, shutter speed. As much as we would love to be opening the shutter and saying, you know, I want this to be a 10 second, just like Rose said, you can't do that in the middle of the day. Your camera is going to still get in too much light that it's just going to be a blank white. So too long of a shutter speed with too much light will result in an overexposed or completed whited out photo. You won't get anything from it. And that's because we've got three different um, factors that are playing in aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. If those other two can't compensate, your shutter speed like will end up causing it to be too white. Same with too short of an exposure. Um, if you want a really fast cheetah shot, but it's in, in a little bit twilight or darker, you are not going to get it. It will be a black cheetah and black surroundings and you can just... Really, there's a cheetah there. Th really, exactly. That's exactly what you'll be telling people is that, <laughs> that that's not going to work. Aperture. Aperture is um, also referred to as the f-stop. This is the size of opening of your lens, or also telescopes have this. Um, and I, I once went into the, a photography store, and I'm like, so how big is f2.8? Like, how many, is that centimeters, is that millimeters? It's a fraction, all right? So even your cell phone can have a pretty good f-stop, like f2 is a lot of the, the new cell phones now. Um, which is a fraction of how big your sensor is compared to how big the opening is. The bigger the number, it's a fraction, it's actually a smaller the opening. So think of it, if you want like one-tenth of the cookie versus one uh, half of, one second, <laughs> one half of the cookie. All right, so let's in more light at f2.8 versus up to f16. They do make lenses that are f1, um, very rare to use this. Uh, I think Stanley Kubrick used an f0.95 to shoot a scene in one of his movies to bring in so much light that they didn't need external, they just had it by candlelight. So, however, you rarely will find more than f1.4. Canon makes a good uh, uh, line of lenses that are 1.4 and then everything pretty much goes up from there. We have an f1.2. Okay, is it millimeter? 85 millimeter? That's one of the, and they also make a 50 millimeter that's f1.2. Um, but then the 35, the 24, all are 1.4 and above. Um, all right, let's talk more about aperture. It's completely lens dependent for your maximum aperture. Um, the usually more expensive lenses have larger maximum aperture. And then all of them typically close down to at least 22. Some of them even go up to 32 as far as how close they, they go. So no matter where you start on your aperture when looking through there, it will go up all the way to about 22 on each of these lenses. Now, how far down it goes depends on what lens you have. And we'll talk um, more about that here. Zoom lenses usually have a range for your aperture. This is what a lot of people haven't, uh, don't know. This is Canon's popular 28 to 135. So when you zoom in, it means at 28, it's f3.5. But as you zoom, it actually closes down to f5.6. 